this. I'll call this Thursday, January 5th meeting of the rules and strategic planning standing committee to order. We do have a quorum present today in the room. We have supervisors Frank Cosgrove, Gentis, Glassburner, and myself. And then online, we have supervisor Ruderstorf. So we can conduct our business. Agenda item number two, proof of notification. The meeting was properly notified. Agenda item number three, agenda approval. I'm looking for a motion to approve a 12 point agenda today. Motion by Cosgrove, second by Glassburner. Any discussion on the agenda? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. We have an agenda. Agenda item number four, approval of minutes. I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes from the December 1st meeting of this committee. I so move. Okay, motion by Gentis. Second by Frank. Any discussion on those minutes? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. We have approved minutes from the December meeting. Agenda item number five, public comments. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment? And we have Alan Linz in the room who's approaching a microphone. So we'll go ahead and let... Okay, all right. Um, I'm just here to speak to item 8.B on the agenda. And I would just like to urge the city and the uh, Red Board, and I, I assume that this committee has oversight of the Red Board of Economic Development, that if there's any issues or concerns in the future that joint meetings be held, I mean, it's pretty easy to do under Wisconsin Meetings Law that each body notices the meeting. And if there's any issues or concerns that come up, that there just be a, a joint meeting held so the all the parties can get together and talk and try and iron out whatever issues may exist, but just have a joint meeting rather than one group just go and do something. So that's all I got, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lenz. So when we get to that item, uh, that's certainly something we can, we can, um, we could take action regarding regarding that if we choose to. We'll, we'll get through that item at that time. And so I'd say file Mr. Lindsay's idea away. And if you have something to add later, uh, just let me know and, and we'll get further comments from you because you're a member of the Red Board. So we, we appreciate you giving us your opinion and taking the time to come today. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to comment to the committee? Okay, hearing no one else, we'll move to agenda item number six, comprehensive plan RFP or request for proposals. So on the cover sheet, let's see, last month, we, the county board authorized this committee to issue a request for proposals for a comprehensive plan update. So that RFP is attached. And last month we had quite a few changes noted. This month, all the changes are accepted. There have been no changes to it since that last version, just that the changes are now accepted. Uh, so yesterday I did some research. You can see that in the chart here on the cover sheet. What I did is I, I went through every comprehensive plan that we had reviewed a couple months ago, found out who the vendors were for each of those, called them each up, said, who should we email this to just to make sure that the RFP gets to the right person. Then I went to the, there's a group called the American Planning Association and they have a Wisconsin chapter and they have people who sponsor uh, the American Association, American, Plan, American Planners Association, Wisconsin chapter. So they had all these links at the, on their page. So I just looked for everyone that said planning clicked on them, see, saw if they did comprehensive planning, then I contacted them. So I got all these people were fairly, mostly fairly quick to respond with specific people to email the RFP to. The only ones I didn't get included, they emailed me late yesterday after I sent all this out. Vandewall and Associates, they have two people who we should email, uh, email the RFP to as well. And then also we, we could put this on the county's website on the homepage. I know that usually MIS is pretty good about that. If we ever asked for something like that to be published. And then 
We could also submit the RFP to the American Planning Association website. They have a spot where you can post RFPs. So any additional thoughts or? Thank you for contacting all those people. Yeah, no problem. So do we, uh, do we have any pricing ideas, timeline ideas, or is this RFP gonna break that down and, and give us that information? Okay, so the pricing ideas, if you go to the RFP and go to uh, page seven at the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, we say, that the county has not set a budget for this project, but vendors should be pre prepared to propose a competitive budget compared with recently completed comp plans in communities similar to Richland County. Um, and what was the second? Uh, the time frame. Time. Be... Oh yeah, top of page seven. So, no, I was just thinking about this on my way in today though. What's happening next? So we we purposefully set this up so that We'll get questions from vendors by January 26th. We will uh, we will review answers to those questions in this committee in February. So we'll approve the answers to the questions that go back out to the vendors and get posted on our website. So that's our next meeting must be February 2nd. Is that right? Seems about right. Okay. So that's why it says February 2nd. Then proposals are due February 16th. And then at our March 2nd meeting, that's when we'll review the proposals in this committee. And then there's a March 9th date in there for interviews. If we choose at the March 2nd date, you know, we want to interview some of these potential people, we could set up an extra meeting if we'd like to. We don't have to. But. Then it goes to the county board on March 21st. So by April, we should have a vendor, fingers crossed here with us in this committee. Um, one question I had is, uh, let's see, we asked them to submit nine hard copies and one electronic copy. These will all go to Ms. Dole. Do we need, do they need to send nine hard copies? I know some people like hard copies, but like I don't need a hard copy. We could reduce that number. Um, I mean, it's going to come on here, right? It will be electronic, but don't be shy. If you want a hard copy, I mean, we're we're at at the firm I work at. We are sometimes asked to send in hard copies, and we do it. So it's really, but there's no reason to print a bunch of them if we don't. If not, everyone wants them. So I would like a hard copy because that's where I pen and mark up and scratch and okay. go through it. Now, if it's hundreds of pages, that's an issue. But Mr. Chairman, would you count me presence? Of course. Yes, a little, little trouble dialing in here. Okay, Mr. Seep is here, so we got seven out of nine now. Um, so let, let me just ask again, does anyone not want a hard copy? I'll take it. Okay, uh, Supervisor Rudersdorf, would you like hard copies of the proposals? Um, yeah, that would be great. Okay, Mr. Seep, would you like hard copies of the proposal? Uh, no, I'm fine. Okay, so let's do, uh, we'll reduce it from. It, it, it's, not, it, it's online, right? It will be online, yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'll reduce it from nine to five. That saves the consultants a little bit of money and wasted paper and ink. Okay, so I think. Uh, Anything we can do to uh, ease the word worker the burden for uh, uh, Ms. Dahl. Yeah, no, uh, the, the vendors or the consultants who submit proposals, Mr. Seep, we're asking them to submit nine hard copies right oh, now. I see. We're just revising that down to five since not everyone oh, wants oh. All right, well, I take it back. Um, Mr. C, Sup Supervisor Gentis is, is wondering if you want a large print version of a hard copy or if it's easiest to look on electronic versions. Oh, I, I, 
if they can make a larger print version, it would be very helpful to me. Okay. And that would if be a not, hard copy? I, if not, I can get by with my magnifier. Okay. My home magnifier. Okay. Well, we will it, say... It, 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 it's it's not a big issue for me because I have a large magnifier at home. But it was really kind of Miss Janice to think of my poor soul. Okay, maybe we'll just stick it. Uh, maybe we'll just stick to five copies. Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking. Thank for, you, okay, I'm looking for a motion to issue a request for proposals for services to update Richland County's comprehensive plan with that one change to the RFP. Cosgrove, okay, so second by Glassburner. Any further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Say, opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. We got an RFP going out. Um, agenda item number seven: condolences for the family of Gaylord Dietz. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, some of you probably remember Supervisor Dietz. You were on the board with him. Um, he passed away at the end of November, and I reached out to um, I reached out to his uh, to his wife and. We've got, we've got a draft resolution here. So I'm just looking for a motion to approve this draft resolution and send it on. I, I, I move, I read it, I move, I still move. Okay, motion by Gentis, second by Cosgrove. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. Agenda item number eight. Committee structure Speaker changes. Um, 8A is public safety standing committee name change and 8B is Richland Economic Development Board committee description and agreement. So let's go to the cover sheet for this one, which is 08 committee structure. Okay, so back in October, the public safety standing committee recommended changing their name to the public safety and judiciary standing committee to be more descriptive of the departments under that committee. So attachment A has highlighted that from their minutes, the action they took there. Um, probably the more significant one we've got here on the agenda today is that we've had a lot of questions raised about the county's commitment to the Richland Economic Development Board and director through um, the referendum process we've been going through and uh, the resolution that we passed back in August to have them explore 50% of their county funding coming from private funding sources. So they passed a resolution. I'm not sure what the date was, but it's attached here. I think it's 08B. Red, uh, oh, no, that's not it. 08C city resolution. So they passed this resolution. I must have been at the end of December. Yeah, December 20th. And the only thing in the resolution that looks off to me is something about us totally pulling out of economic development. Which one is that? Oh, I see. Oh. The Common Council authorized issuing Richland County a notice of intent to withdraw from the structural documents. Um, oh, I think it's the fourth whereas. Whereas Richland County has identified economic development as a department eligible for elimination due to their financial challenges. Now, the county board has never taken any action to say that we want to eliminate our role. So I think that was the one that didn't quite look right to me. Um, so let's see, at our referendum, so the, the issue of them issuing, let's see, they're issuing a notice of intent to withdraw, but it's based on us eliminating our budgetary contribution. And that's not the case. We didn't do that. So the the referendum committee took action on 
January 3rd, two days ago, to uh, reduce its contributions for the county from 60% to 30% starting in 2024. We have economic develop, development funded in the 2023 budget. So this is kind of where Mr. Lenz's idea comes in. So my initial idea was we should refer to the red board the issue of changing the terms of the agreement between the county and the city because the agreement right now, and this is an attachment 08B red agreement, this is all based on the county giving 60% and the city giving 40%. And what we're saying now is we want to go down to 30% 2024. in 2024. So I would think that the, the agreement needs to be now renegotiated if we want to change our contribution amount. But now if we have a joint meeting with the red board, or if we just punt it to them and say, could you come up with a proposal and bring it back to us? Um, red board is supposed to report to us in our committee structure. Document. Excuse me. I, I don't think it's the red board we would have a meeting with. It would be the city council, wouldn't it? Because they're the ones that have jurisdiction and we have jurisdiction over that. Uh, how's that? We could. That could that could be the case. We could meet with the city council. Folks, think Mr. About Chairman. It. Yes, Mr. C. Uh, two or three nights ago, when the city council met, uh, they took action and voted to withdraw. So, uh, from the they are they have officially withdrawn from from the from the economic development participation with the county. Okay, Mr. Lenz would like to speak from the red board. Yes, and I'm unclear if the city has taken action um, as well. I mean, is Jason currently a county employee or a city employee? Well, did he switch? Well, so if you go to the bottom of page six of the red agreement, it's a termination section it's section 10 and it says 10 a b and c it says this structural document may be terminated as follows a by mutual agreement of all parties b if one of the governmental entities fails to make its budgeted and required contribution pursuant to this structural document the other governmental entity may terminate this structural document upon such default and then C, either governmental entity may withdraw from this structural document provided they notify the other entity in writing of that intent by serving upon the other parties a notice of intent to withdraw. Upon the service of such notice, the parties agree to meet and confer in a reasonable manner, time, location, and number of meetings within 90 days to discuss the proposed withdrawal and potential amendments to the structural document. After 90 days from service on all of the parties of the notice of intent to withdraw, the party which served that notice may withdraw from the structural document by service upon all of the parties of a written notice of withdrawal. So they've issued us a notice of intent to withdraw. Is that what that they said? Officially. Well, that, that was the resolution. Yeah, but they haven't sent it to us, have they? they yes. Where is that? I missed that. Uh, it's 08C city resolution. I have it. Okay, okay, so they did submit this. I thought they were just saying, it. okay. So now we probably need to set up a meeting with them to discuss this. Okay, now I, I'm sorry. So I was thinking we should refer to the red board, the issue of changing the terms of the agreement between the county and the city. But I think maybe what we should now just hearing all this, maybe what we should be doing instead of that is we should be scheduling a meeting, I think, between this committee and the city council. Yeah, they're the governing. Right. And would you invite the red at that time? Why wouldn't we be having that discussion with everybody? Sounds like a good idea to me. basically add. Uh, I mean, just speaking for myself, I would agree with that. You know, I can't speak for the entire red board, but I would think it'd be a good idea to have the red board sitting at the table as well if this discussion is taking place. And is that an entire city council issue, or do they have a sub uh, a committee like we have that would have that? If I if I understand this correctly, the finance committee addressed this initially and then forwarded 
forwarded the resolution to the city council. So I think we should find out what committee we should meet with them. I'm going to guess it's going to be a committee level before it would be city council level to have okay. that discussion. Oh, yeah, Mr. Glassburner, do you know? Do I know what, what's the question, Sean? Do you know if we would meet, if the Rules and Strategic Planning Committee would meet with the city full city council or the finance committee? Yeah, I would think that would be a discussion for the city administrator and the, the mayor. I, I would assume that because it's already made it to full council level, that it would be a discussion at full council level. But they may defer it back to a, a subcommittee. Maybe we just need to be open ended and say the city council or one of its committees. I think that would be, I think that would capture everything. So, Mr. Chair, they're, they're now, what they, they're mm -hmm. just meeting once a month, and is it the first? The first. first. It's the, no, this yeah, is the first, first Tuesday. Yeah. We are meeting on the night. We are meeting on the ninth this week, or this, oh, okay. this month. This month. I was I was wrong, Supervisor Dentist. They're meeting the on the ninth. That's a Monday. Is that correct? Can I <laughs> chime in here? Oh yes, great. Go ahead. They, they are meeting this month. They met on the third. They'll meet again on the seventeenth, and then starting in February, they will meet on the first Tuesday of each month. And meetings now start at six thirty. Right, that's what I thought. So it'd be the 17th at 6.30, which we can meet for Did you get that? Yep, we got that. We're just uh, um, thinking over how we would actually meet with them, given that we have a county board meeting at 7 p.m. That's pretty tight. Thank you, Joanne. You're welcome. Wait till the February meeting is what we're is what Supervisor Glassbrenner is wondering. Or we just request a special meeting. I guess I would suggest that we have our uh, city administrator work with your city administrator to make sure we are meeting with the right groups of people and we're not accidentally going to a meeting that doesn't have that structure to do that uh, and then meet as soon as possible, even if it is a special meeting, I think we need to address this and make sure we get it. Am I doing it? Okay. Let's see. Is that a motion? Maybe I can't. That's the best one I've heard so far. <laughs> so. Okay, there's a lot of head nodding. So Okay, a motion by Frank and a second by Glassburner. Let me see if I can restate that for the group and you can tell me if I get this right or not. Um, that should um, have a meeting with the city council or a committee of the council and that should be as soon as possible and it should be arranged by our county administrator and the city administrator. And it should include, include the, red, include the board. red board. Yes, yes. Uh, that would be my motion, correct? Okay. Does anyone need me to restate that? No, we don't. <laughs> okay, Ms. Dole has the video recording, so she can go back if she needs to <laughs> get it in the minutes. Okay, any further discussion on that motion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Opposed, say no. Okay, that motion carries. Um, now let's go back to the committee structure document. So we've got a few changes here. We've got the public safety name change. Um, I did go ahead and make edits to the uh, economic development board section because it's out of date. We never updated it after the March and April action where we changed the, the way members are appointed and whose votes and all, all that stuff. So I included that. That's in 08D uh, committee structure document. All these things are tracked changes so you can see uh, in red and underline what's going on there. Um, let's see, back to the cover sheet, we did two other things. Okay, I'm a little confused because we have, just starting to get confused because I see we have a couple cover sheets here. 
don't be looking at the 08 termination of economic agreement. Um, one. That's we're looking at 08 committee structure. That's the cover sheet we should be looking at here. Um, okay. We, attachment D also has changes noted for the housing authority. The county board made that at the December county board meeting and also to the okay. land and zoning and rules and strategic planning committees. We made those in July that had to do with the comprehensive plan. So all of these changes now that we've made in the past six to eight months are included in the committee structure document. So I just took the last resolution and I copied it from when we last changed our committee structure document. It's at the bottom of the cover sheet. Um, so I think what would be in order is a motion to recommend to the county board amending the committee structure document to reflect several changes. Okay, motion by Glassbrenner, second by Cosgrove. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Okay, that motion carries. So thanks for the discussion on that. Do you think that went fairly quickly, Mr. Lenz? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we might be ahead of schedule. Yeah, we're moving. Okay, so agenda item number nine, strategic plan next steps. So I asked... Mr. Langreck to put together, uh, he's homesick today, by the way, so we should, he's, he's uh, moving all the documents, he's here. So we just wanna thank him for being here, even though he's not feeling very well today. Um, so I asked him if he could put together, in an effort to try to, keep better track of the strategic plan and what we're doing. I asked him if he could take the work plan and the strategic plan is basically a four year plan. Um, can we get an idea of what should be our focus for the next year? We've already completed one year, we're entering year two, and then we have two more years after that. So he took a third of all of the tactics that we have not completed. And he put those onto the cover sheet here. And then the work plan that we reviewed at our, I think this was at the November meeting, that's also included. And what I did is I highlighted in green the ones that he put in his cover sheet. So you can see which ones he's recommending. I counted them up and there are 20 highlighted in green. There are 40 not highlighted. So he indeed got a third. So good job, Clint. Is there anything you want to add to that, Mr. Langer? If you're feeling up to it? Yeah, just um, comments. So, um, like the cover letter uh, indicates, it was kind of a stratified approach to try to touch on uh, several from each of our categories. Uh, examples here of the, you know, the far left categories on starting on the top on streamlined organizational structure. Um, it was kind of put together on what we think is a balance of feasibility versus um, um, the um, uh, what could be the most bang for a buck in the short term, uh, kind of a, a mentality, but uh, certainly would like to hear discussion from the committee today. If there's things that are seem of, of more importance, more value, higher priority and moving to the front, um, we can certainly change those. And again, this will be a plan. We'll certainly hit changes and reprioritize uh, can might also have to be considered, but looking for discussion on, on uh, any changes. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. C. Uh, uh, Mr. Langrick, are you speaking of the committee structure? Uh, no, sir. Looking at, we're looking at the strategic plan, uh, the work plan document with the different tactics in, in achieving our strategic plan initiatives. Mr. C, it's oh, 09, right. 09A work plan in, on your iPad folder. Thank you. I have a question now. So under um, improved financial practices, the second item says analyze the county's indirect rate. What is the indirect rate? So our, um, I can answer that. It's so our indirect rate is um, 
what we're trying to tabulate when we're uh, putting off for different reimbursement programs, either through the state or for grants. It's a uh, different administrative fees that we can associate against those revenues. Like computers, would that be an example? So are we charging when we're charging them an hourly rate? Are we figuring in our technology costs? Things like that, is that right? Yes, um, as part of it, um, we do have Maximus that helps us with uh, several of our uh, big component that they do is our, our different revenues coming through the state, say, like through child support. They help us gather and understand uh, the different um, the different metrics that go into capturing, say, work that's being done by the clerk of circuit court and trying to account for those different times and materials that are going against uh, uh, different projects like that. So we're always looking to try to maximize again for what we can do for reimbursements through the state or different grants to uh, maximize our revenues. Okay, that answered his question. Let's see if no one else wants to jump in. I had a couple ideas for uh, ones to switch around perhaps. But at first I want to say overall, I think the purpose of this is to get more people on board with what our priorities are for the next year so that when someone brings up either on the county board or, you know, member of the public or county staff that, boy, we really need to get this done now that we go back to this and we say, well, is it on this list of priorities? And so if we're gonna choose to prioritize this new thing, then we gotta pull something off the list just to make sure we're not being pulled in too many different directions. So um, the things I was thinking about, uh, they're they're all on page three. All of them on page one and two looked, looked good to me. On page three under develop a culture of support for employees, Yeah, on the work plan. My money. Okay. So the the ones that are highlighted in green right now yeah. are celebrating success and the professional personal achievements of employees and then evaluating flexible work schedules. And I was thinking about the second from the bottom in that within that strategy, create a total benefits program for employees that highlight total compensation and investment of the county in its employees including salary, fringe, wellness, and professional development. I was thinking that, that might be a higher priority than evaluating a flexible work schedule. I'm just throwing out ideas. I'm not really, I'm not super invested in it. I'm just throwing it yeah, out there. That's a good question. But we did increase their, they could get their vacation immediately one week, right? But that's only one week the first year. I don't know the answer to that, but yeah, we did. That's crossed off the list. We did increase vacation time, but I don't know. I, since you're saying that, I still think we are not up to, you know, standards on that. <laughs> Mr. Langrick, can you answer her question? With our, um, with our vacation time, we just did forward that now. So at the point of employment, when an employee is entering, they do get one vacation or one, one week of vacation. Um, and then we did add, or we shifted our accrual amounts to the left so that folks are accruing uh, higher vacation with less years. I guess I was only thinking maybe we should be talking about that total benefits program with employees because we, we have already given them vacation. We, we got that off the list and mm -hmm. Well, that could be debated, but I think the county board already took that action, Supervisor Gentis. But I mean, making priorities. You gotta. If we're making priorities here, when it says the complete package, maybe you should include that. Bye on. Okay. okay. I'll just read through my other ideas just so you all can react to them. Um, the, it's at the very bottom, deepen staff training and leadership and management. 
Um, one says that, that Mr. Langrex is recommending sponsored department head training targeted at leadership and management. And then the fourth one down, ensure conference attendance and professional development is aligned with the goals of the strategic plan. I was thinking that number two and number three seemed more important to me than number one and number four in order of priority. So I was thinking educating employees on how government works and the need for teamwork and partnership within county departments and creating a culture of sharing information and learning from peer counties. So those are my reactions and I'd love to hear your all's reactions either to those or other ideas you have for shifting things around. So uh, my, my thoughts on that are I, I like the ideas. I think um, in looking this over, um, I think those are next steps down the road a little bit in looking what has been put together, creating a finance and HR. I think we almost need the HR section of that improved so that we can do those things you're talking about. Um, I'm concerned that we're putting too much of that responsibility on the current administrator to do all these things when we really need. That's more of an HR department section to vision and manage the, and, and so I can see why, why we're starting with the department heads. Um, I agree everybody needs the training, but we start with the department heads, we get the HR and we build it out. That's my vision. I guess my question on the first thing that you had suggested on page. Yeah, top of page three. I guess I, I would wouldn't mind hearing from administrator Langrek, you know, his thoughts on that. Like I know he mentioned feasibility and what seemed to fit. So thoughts on why he chose the two he did versus the one that you mentioned. Um, so can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the uh, the two that were picked to celebrate success for, pressure for professional achievements and such, and then the evaluate work schedules uh, were kind of picked as the, the extent that I kind of visualize in setting up uh, administrative department head teams to initiate on those. Um, the total compensation package is something we can take a look at. I visualize that being kind of more through hours off of myself and administration uh, to try to solve on how we can put those uh, together for us. So it was kind of seen as, uh, again, just for our sake of trying to fit it in with all the other projects going on. But if that's the priority and that's what the the or, or the committee here wants to see, we can we can switch those around and do our best to try to achieve those before uh, the end of 2023. Thank you. I think we should go with his recommendation. Seeing he's he knows best how to distribute his time and the vision. Yeah. Yeah. No. And hearing this uh, makes me feel like he's right too. So thank you for those. Why we have discussions. Yeah, that's why we have discussions. <laughs> um, okay, so the only other thing I was wondering about is how do we kind of bring the whole county board on board with this concept? Like, these are the priorities for this coming year. Well, I know, I mean, I did really brief update at the last meeting. I think maybe just doing something similar where you know, are basically updating that we have this list of things we need to get through by the end of what would be four years out. Is it 2025? Yeah, 2026. 2026, you're right. So we have to start. I mean, I think just updating, like why we're doing this. Okay. I would suggest the list of those items in this document be brought to the county board as a short presentation, as this is what we accomplished last year, this is what we're working on this year, and see what's coming up. There's the rest of the document for the future, and it's uh, repetition so they know where it is is gonna be important. The highlighting should be even bigger so people can really focus on that. The ones in green, we yeah. should make it clear that those are the 2023 yeah. priorities. I think it's confusing if people are just looking at it. Yeah, sorry. Well, I wonder if maybe what could happen though is if Mr. Langrek just removes all the other highlighting in that. 
actually, yeah, just remove all the other highlighting and just show in green what we'd be focusing on in 2023. Mm -hmm. That would probably help the county board. Leave the ones stricken out, though, that are done. Leave the ones stricken out. Yeah. Yep. yep, I understand. Okay, and then maybe should we just do that at the January meeting, or do we need any more? Are we good? Is that reasonable to have done by January? That's what I want to make sure. Yes, we can have the we can have the work plan updated and put together with resolution for adoption in, in January. I don't. I don't know that. Um, okay, so we didn't talk about having the county board adopt these but what do you all think about that idea do we want the county board to adopt these as our 2023 priorities for the next year and they may not like something you never know okay so that gives them a chance to change things if they don't like what we're recommending or what mr langreck is recommending as well okay so um how about we We'll have teeth and ownership, Mr. Frank says. So, um, so how about we get a motion to um, recommend the 2023 24 strategic planning priorities to the county board with a resolution to be drafted by Mr. Langrick? Does that sound okay? Okay, motion by Glassbrenner. Second by Frank. All those in any further discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. That'll be going forward to the county board in January. So thank you, Mr. Langreck, for doing that also on short notice. And this will also help, by the way, with his um, he's going through his review right now with finance and personnel. So this could feed right into his goals for next year um, as part of that too. Welcome, Chair Brewer. We are just moving on to Safely. the most exciting item, number 10, ethics review. <laughs> he's very glad he's here for ethics review. Okay, well, I gotta say, uh, okay, so yesterday, like I do before every meeting about ethics, I go back and I listen to our discussion I think that was the hardest meeting we had, uh, not because we didn't get things done, because we did get things done, but only because it was so complex. So if you scroll down on the cover sheet, this is item number 10, ethics review in your folders. The cover sheet is 13 pages long. And last, last month, what we did is we came up with our recommendation for advisory opinions. This is at the top of page nine. Then we, all together, we handled complaint procedures and investigations, investigation procedure. And I really hope I got it all right because <laughs> we did a lot. It took me to, I had to stop my painting project and really think about it for a little bit to get this all written down correctly. So if anyone notices any errors, in the painting or? <laughs> yeah, I can show you the paint job if you want. <laughs> I had a few misses on the paint job when oh, I got distracted. Uh, Mr. Chair, you had asked for, go scroll back up, um, for the public property policy to take that to our standing committee. So I just want to say we briefly discussed it at our last um, health and human services meeting, and there were no issues from, and veterans, and there were no issues from either department with the um, policy. I believe, well, she was on, I think uh, Director Trisha was on, but maybe she's, I don't know if she wanted to add anything. Um, but yeah, there was no issues with it. Okay. I know I got a couple emails. I think, let's see, Ms. Doudna from the fair and Mr. Rislow. Um, sent me an email and I think Public Works discussed it, but I did not have time to compile all those emails and, and comments. So I thought we could handle that next month oh. when I've got a little more time. Anyone else discuss it at any committee? Okay, 
All right, so we will come back to that one in February. Um, so moving on now. So I thought today, I think we've got the time. Uh, we can handle enforcement, which is at the very bottom. That's on page 12. And then we can go back up to the top. And in the very top, what we'd be discussing is, I think this is actually the most interesting part of this whole thing, governing body, purpose of ethics, and positions covered. So we now that we've gone through all these different things that we would apply to, hopefully it helps to be able to think about the big picture and the umbrella of all of this. So we'll start with enforcement at the bottom of page 12. So right now our ordinance, uh, is anyone opposed to me reading this? Would that be help, helpful? I think you would prompt it. Okay, I'll read it then. So our current ordinance says, as far as our ethics enforcement, if after having investigated the matter and having heard from the alleged violator, the ethics board shall decide if this ordinance has been violated and the appropriate penalty to assess against the violator. The matter shall then be referred to the corporation counsel for prosecution if necessary. In appropriate cases, the board shall report possible violations of the crim of criminal law to the DA. Penalties for violations which shall be determined by the ethics board shall include A, withholding of the payment of salary or expense from the violator, and or B, a forfeiture of not less than $100 or more than $1,000 for each violation of the ordinance plus court costs. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Wait, didn't we say we we're going to go to the top at some point to decide who the ethics board was? Yeah, after this. Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't matter that we don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so either, um, agreeing with Mr. Frank, but I do think it might matter who it applies to. Now, we've been talking about it's going to apply now to employees and officials. And right now it's just employees mm -hmm. and it has several exemptions. So when we think about the penalties, I think we should be thinking about not just employees, but county board members and other elected officials and probably citizens of boards that that'll come up when we get up to that section. We can make decisions about that. So in Crawford and Sauk County, um, they say if the ethics inquiry board finds that clear, satisfactory and convincing evidence exists for believing the allegations of the complaint, the ethics inquiry board shall refer its findings and recommendations to the county board or in the case of an employee to the personnel committee. The board may make the following recommendations. One, recommend that the county board order the officer or employee to conform his or her conduct to the ethics code, or recommend that the official or employee be censured, suspended, removed from office, be issued a private reprimand, public reprimand, and in the case of an employee may also recommend denial of merit increase, suspension without pay, discharge, or other appropriate disciplinary action. Two, the Ethics Inquiry Board may also refer the matter to the district attorney to commence enforcement pursuant to the, pursuant to the procedures and remedies of Wisconsin Statutes 19.59. And then Iowa County has a slightly different take on it. Do you all want to hear that one or not? Okay, then I will read it. It comes from attachment, uh, it'd be document 10B, Other County Ethics Ordinances. If you go to Iowa County, it's section 701.26. Uh, so Iowa County's ethics ordinance starts on page seven and section 701.26 of their ordinance starts on page eight or 14. 14, thank you. Sanction, they call their sanctions. Violation of any provision of this code should raise conscientious questions for the official or employee concerned as to whether voluntary resignation or other action is indicated to promote the best interests of the County of Iowa. If the ethics board determines that an official or employee has violated any provision of this code, the board may, as part of its report to the County board, make any of the following recommendations. And then they have th three possible recommendations. A, in the case of an official who is an elected county board supervisor that the county board consider sanctioning, reprimanding, censuring, or expelling the person. B, in the case of a citizen member, the county board or other appointing authority consider removing the person from the administrative agency. C, in the case of an employee that the employee's appointing authority consider imposing discipline up to and including discharge of the employee. And then they have a section two under sanctions. I was reading from section one. 
In addition to the sanctions available under Section 1, any official or employee violating the provisions of this section shall be subject to a non-reimbursable forfeiture of not more than $100. We all think. I think a little bit of a combination here. <laughs> I, on the Sauk County, they list exactly all the different things that could be done. And ours, it's sort of left open. So, but I don't understand how we decide which one of those things is at what level. Is that just the ethics board to make that decision on their own? I think so, but I, yeah, I don't, we don't have, we probably won't have a guide to say when do you do a private reprimand versus a discharge versus a fine. So I sort of like there are three things here about the county, the city, you know, the, the person and the employee and then work it into the Crawford County. Some way I saw how they. So you like in the Iowa County example, how they have three different yeah. examples, official, citizen member, and employee. Right. You like those categories. And Supervisor Frank is agreeing. Is that right? Um, yes. I agree with Linda as well. Okay. That. It makes it clear. My question, I think it's interesting that they have not more than $100 and ours yeah. is not less than 100 or more than 1000 just seems so arbitrary. Where did we come up with these numbers? I don't know if it matters, but or if we'd want to change that. So under that section, uh, penalties under the original one uh, for which shall be determined by the ethics board, withholding of payment or salary uh, or expense. I don't know that we can do that. I don't know if we can actually withhold the salary. I think we can suspend somebody and then withhold the salary. I don't think we can just say. Hey, you have to work without you. pay. Yeah, right. I mean, so I, I think that needs to be clarified. The other ones both mentioned something uh, more clear, more clear than Suspension that. Suspension without pay. Yes, right, exactly. So I, I think maybe that's what they're getting at, but it certainly doesn't. Get clear. So. Administrative leave could yeah. be another way of saying it. So. Yeah. The Crawford Sock County example doesn't, it also doesn't give a penalty expense. Is that normal, I guess, for counties to charge for violations of ordinances? I only know about these three counties. These okay. are the only ones that that I've personally researched. I just, I don't know, it seems odd to me. I do like how Crawford and Sock County, they give just more options. Mm -hmm. um, censuring, suspending, removing from office, Yes. Private reprimand, public reprimand, because I think we have done some of those things before as a county board, but we've never had this sort of menu of options before us. And so I think we get too into the financial penalty. Right. I think a private reprimand sometimes can be in order because it's going to sit in their file for some period of time. And you know, if something happens again, you've got that record. So I think that's a, an important piece to have. So. The, what did you like off of the Crawford Sock County exam? Because I know we said we liked the three sections on the Iowa County. Well, I like the what do you like in the, the county number one down? I like that. And I thought number one and number two, and I would get rid of that money thing like we have. Because it says then it can be. Obviously, if it's illegal. Illegal, completely illegal, it goes to the district attorney. I think it's just clearly states. How about if we try to handle it like this? Uh, let's try to handle the introductory paragraph first and see which one we would like, because each one of these has an introductory paragraph. So our example, you know, says if after hearing or after having investigated it, the ethics board, um, let's see, can, can be referred to Corporation Council uh, or the DA. Um, in Crawford County, they say, if the Ethics Board, I like how they say, if it finds clear, satisfactory, and convincing evidence existing for believing the allegations of the complaint, 
then they shall refer it to the county board. So we don't say that currently. We say we'll refer it to a corp council. So I think that's kind of a question or not. Do we want to refer it to the county board or the personnel committee? And then in Iowa County, they they talk a little bit more about this should raise conscientious mm -hmm. questions for the official or employee um, concerned as to whether voluntary resignation or other action is indicated to promote the best interests of the county of Iowa. If the ethics board determines that they have done that, as part of its report to the county board, they can make any of the following recommendations. So they're just sending it to the county board. So. Well, it says if they determine that they have violated any provision of the code. Yes. Okay. I actually kind of like their first sentence because I feel like that puts it on the person to think about what, you know, how they have violated the, <laughs> the ethics. But then I would, so personally, I like the first sentence of Iowa County, and then I like the, um, the first sentence of the Crawford Sock County. Accepting the portion where do we send that to court council or county board, but that where they said the clear, satisfactory, and convincing evidence, I like that. Okay. So I would say put Iowa County's sentence first, and then the the Crawford County second. Crawford County second sentence. No, then, first sentence. Second. I'm sorry, first second. <laughs> yeah, I got you down. I follow you. It gets it confusing. Confused. It gets confusing. Okay, so we'll use under your proposal here. We would use Iowa County's first sentence and Crawford Sauk County's first sentence, and we would put Crawford Sauk County's first sentence second. Mm -hmm. Right. And then would you change any of the words in that second, new second sentence for us? Because they're saying it should be recommended to the county board or in the case of an employee to the personnel committee. Well, I think we need to determine where does this go? Council. Yeah. Uh, you can always go to the county board from there. If you need to be. Right. Um, However, in our original one, the only time that it was referred to corporation council was if we thought there was need for prosecution. At, at least that's what I'm reading here. Mm -hmm. The matter shall then be referred to the corporation council for prosecution if necessary. So it wasn't like we were referring all of cases to that. Yeah, you can refer to this. I think all the ideas out there, court council, county board, DA, personnel committee. We have four options in front of us. Well, I think it should go to the court council because we can decide at what level it, it should be moved on. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that why we have a court council? But who then makes the recommendations for what type of penalty? Like if it's not. Well, the if ethics it's, committee then. Well, but that's not stated clearly. That's what we're oh, saying. Yeah. If we're just referring it right to county board, then that isn't putting it on. The only thing the ethics board would be doing would be determining if there's actually a valid oh, yeah. allegation. Mm -hmm. So do we do we believe that the purpose then is for the ethics board to work with corporation council and making some sort of recommendation for well, how about it? a we're penalty or personnel committee and court council and not the county board yet until seems like we're rushing it to the county board until things have been worked out, doesn't it? Well, I almost feel like we need to know what it, do we think the ethics board is responsible for, which isn't that part of the first portion of this whole document. <laughs> yeah, maybe we maybe we need to know the uh, purpose you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess when hearing you all discuss it, I almost think we should, this is just what came into my mind, we should make a recommendation to the county board and that county board recommendation might include a recommendation that the corporation council prosecute it or that violations of criminal law be referred to the DA. So if we're just always referring everything to the full county board because usually, you know, word kind of starts to spread and it's best probably just to get all, all the evidence out in the open to the county board. This is what's going on. We're recommending it either go to the corp council or the DA but we need your blessing. We need everyone on the same page. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Brewer. In the real world in which we operate right now, I, it, <laughs> it would be, should a situation come up, arise, the first guy I would contact would be our administrator and then corp council 
to determine whether or not we have a ethics violation and how it should be handled. That's what would really happen. So I don't know how we want to manipulate our wording to embrace that that action. I would agree with you, Lenny. I think it should probably be stated that, I mean, as far as if we're determining whether there's actually a valid is it a breach? How should it be right. handled? I think that should, should be, be stated. Should in we conjunction. keep a lid on it? Obviously, you know, let's not let it get out there. And yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I think it does it kind of come down to a case by case basis, you know, as far as I see what um, Mr. Brewer is saying by taking it to the administrator first to see if there even is, you know, action to be taken. So in that case, is the uh, administrator or and or court counsel, as you mentioned, um, the reporting party, the party that's initially reporting to, and then it would come down into the ethics if it that, needed to be? That would be my question, because if we're investigating something, isn't that because a formal complaint has been made? In which case, wouldn't we be having a meeting in which we might invite corporation counsel and administrator to be present at? So, and we did talk about this last time, and this is only fresh in my mind because I watched it all yesterday. We did establish a complaint procedure, and it says the corporation counsel or county clerk shall accept from any person a verified written complaint which states the name of the officer or employee alleged to have committed a violation of this code and sets the material facts um, forward. Then those, either the clerk or counsel, should forward a copy of that complaint to the accused officer or employee and the ethics board within 10 days. So I think in the real world of the future, if we adopt this ordinance, say you hear about something, Chair Brewer, I think the question would be, is someone going to file a written complaint or not? And right. If they do, but, this is how it works. Well, and but not all complaints are written, obviously. Here, I'll give you two examples of things that I recall. One involved an accident seen outside of town and a truck's, truck was loaded with all kinds of uh, meat, and there was frozen packages of meat all over the highway. And the complaint that I got was, uh, members of the sheriff's department were seen loading meat into their cars. And uh, wasn't a written complaint, but, but how do you follow up on that? And, and is it an ethics violation? Is it a, is it a criminal violation? Uh, Turns out that the meat was being delivered to the food bank, but still we had we had to investigate and find out. That was one example. And should a written complaint have been uh, involved? I don't know. Another another complaint I recall was a member of the uh, the the committee, the ag committee on. Uh, uh, Not the not the extension, but the committee that involves land use and those those folks, and this was a a, a citizen member, and he uh, inappropriately uh, made suggestive comments to one of the other committee members, and and ultimately we we removed him from that as a citizen member, but. But how should that have been followed up? And, and in this case, uh, I think it was before Flint. So we, I think we did talk to, at that time, Corp Council about it and talked to the individual and got, he, he basically resigned, made it easy on us. But, uh, uh, so there's two examples. So think through those two examples and see how they'd fit in the scenarios that we're projecting here but we need to assume in both of his examples that we've received written complaints policy. well may i make a comment Dr. Schultz? Yeah. in our investigation procedure that we established in december it says following the receipt of a verified complaint and i remember that we specifically discussed that there may be ones that aren't written but if we can verify that they're um word i'm looking for huh valid, valid then we could begin our preliminary investigation. So I think in those cases, those aren't necessarily written, but if you have verification that they're a valid complaint, according to what we have, what I'm understanding is we would be able to begin our investigation. 
at that some, point. Something. Like Chair Brewer, that. Chair Brewer could, for example, write down the complaint that he received from someone else and submit it to us. Right. Um, That's it, what I understand. Because under this. complaint procedure, it says verified written complaint. That's what we had adopted already further up. But it doesn't have to be the person making the. It doesn't, oh, okay. it doesn't have to yeah. have happened to that person. Mm -hmm. They don't have to write it down. You could have written it down or anything. But yeah. Ms. So if, if I recall correctly in our complaint thing, and this is sort of awkward because it does seem like what Chair Brewer says that it should go to the administrator, but we said it should go to the clerk and to the uh, window because they were elected and they weren't appointed and that we wanted to circumvent so that there wasn't if there was a complaint to the about the administrator so we have to figure out how to deal with that because most of the time it would go right to the administrator but that's that gray area there right yeah you did and may i also say like if this has to do with a county board member would that necessarily involve the administrator I mean, I guess I can see where it would involve corporation council. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's specific instances where we'd want the administrator involved if it's an employee, but then if it's a citizen member or a county board member, where where does that fall? Yeah, we did have this debate last month. We decided the corporation council or county clerk. But just, that's just so for receipt of the, the complaint. Receipt. Yeah. Now, I would assume that the administrator is probably in almost all cases going to be involved in hearing things, but the official channels that goes through, we were saying those two people because just in case the complaint is about the administrator, we wanted a way, and if say it involves the corporation council and the administrator, now we have the county clerk as a possibility. So it's giving people other options to, to go through. I think just to bring it back to what we're trying to figure out here is enforcement. Who are we going, once we like receive the complaint, do the investigation. We're going to make a recommendation. Who are we making the recommendation to? Are we making it to the county board? So are that's we where we're at now. I thought we were still on the preliminary. Who discusses what our recommendation is? We are still. Enforcement includes the recommendation after you do the investigation. So we come up with a recommendation. What what are we going to in Force, are we going to right, but what I'm saying is it, the recommendation, if we're stating that something like in conjunction with, who does that include? Corporation Council? Are we making that recommendation in conjunction with Corporation Council and the administrator? Just Corporation Council? Do we include that at all? Po like an and or? Do you know what I'm saying? That's what we have to decide. Who do we want the recommendation to go to? No, who, or, or. I understand what you're saying. I'm saying in prior to that, we would send a recommendation forward to somebody, which we have to decide. But that recommendation is being made by the ethics board in conjunction with, right? Is that what we were saying? We wanted the corporation council to be a part of it or not? Am I confusing? I have everyone? to go, Does I have that to make go back. I don't, I don't remember. What I'm saying is if we're having a meeting where we're coming up with a recommendation yes. to forward on to whoever we forward it on to, does that meeting include corporation council and or the administrator? And so therefore our recommendation would be in conjunction with whoever is at our meeting. Does that make sense or am I getting too in the weeds? No, and do we need do we need to specify that cuz would we right. would there be any situation <laughs> where we would bring someone else in to give us a to give the ethics group um, ideas and direction? I can't think well so that would be there. Well, or relevant I mean, I guess, yeah, maybe we're getting too far in the yeah, because if you're investigating the complaint, what if it's about an employee and you need to bring in their department head? Well, and, and this section is talking about just the enforcement. It's not right. talking about not the recommendation. Right. Okay. So in, if, if I'm reading this, if where we are right now is just the enforcement side as to what the um, penalty is, I guess, if that's the way, if that's what we're considering the enforcement side. Um, We, we never stated previously if the corporation council was involved was involved all we stated before is the corporation council could receive the complaint and forward it to us so in my mind it's more assumed that 
of course, we're probably going to be consulting with the Corporation Council when we receive a complaint. So that, he is probably going to be at a closed session. That's what's included in our investigation procedure. Mm -hmm. Next section up that we just finished. Okay, so then maybe we don't need to state it at all. I guess I was thinking that because in our current enforcement procedure, it mentions referring it to corporation counsel, but only in the case of for prosecution. But maybe if we take that, maybe it doesn't need to be stated that way. I don't know. I'm trying to think, would there be possibility of civil um, action that would need to be done? And so if something happened, if it was a civil action that needed to be done, then it would be court counsel. If it would be criminal activity, then it would be the district attorney. So I think that's why they're mentioned here in case there's something beyond just. Right. So do we want to leave that then? Right. To make so, it specific? Yeah. So just saying a, a suspension wouldn't be a civil action, um, but restitution for something that they may have done could be. It's interesting, though, neither of the other counties include those two paths, like the DA or corporation council. Uh, no, they do. No. They do? Crawford and Sauk County. Yeah. Oh, the district attorney. Okay. Right. <clears throat> I didn't see it in. Um... Oh, you're right, though. Uh, Crawford and Sauk don't mention the corporation council. No. But again, maybe that's just assumed. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. I never assume. Yeah, we could probably spell it out. I mean, in my opinion, I think we could say, you know, um, I think this is kind of where I was going earlier about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I think I was trying to say, refer, could we just refer it, refer our recommendations to the county board, which could include um, referring the, re the, the recommendation to the county board could in, include a referral of the matter to the Corporation Council for Prosecution or and or uh, a referral to the DA for a possible violation of criminal law. You know, just to kind of spell that to lay our options out. What did you say after to the Court Council for Prosecution? What did you say? Mm -hmm. uh, I said or to the DA for a no, possible for the for the for the Court Council. What did you say? Uh, referred to the Court Council for Prosecution. Is prosecution the right word? That's what we have. That's what we have now. Yeah. <laughs> I think they would just be stating their opinion, like the yeah. We we could, but a corp counsel could prosecute something in a court. I would think under a civil matter. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Okay. Supervisor, I didn't know that. Okay. So then, when your scenario, then we don't need to specify then how we're coming to those or who is included in coming to those recommendations. Okay, that makes sense. I'm sorry if I got us way off in the week. No, that's okay. I think we want to be pretty solid on where this is once we push all this out, <laughs> you know, because people will bring this up at the county board potentially, and we need to, they need to know that we really thoroughly discussed it, I think. Well, and think of it from the opposite. What if you're the one being charged or accused with wrongdoing? You want to make sure then that there are procedures that are followed. Someone doesn't just shoot from the hip and say, you're fired. Yeah, exactly. You got to protect people. They, they would have to go through this committee and then to the county board, and then there would have to be further action after that. So, as far as how we want to state it, then I don't know if you guys liked the idea of putting the Iowa County's first sentence first, yeah. mm -hmm. the Crawford County's first second sentence second, second. Mm -hmm. and then do we want to continue with Crawford County? Because I know you mentioned that you liked those, but we also liked Sauk County's three little sections. So I think we have to figure out how to work those right. sections together. Yep. Well, under the under the uh, Rich, I'm sorry, Crawford Sock, the very last phrase, the ethics inquiry board may also refer the matter to district attorney to commence enforcement pursuant to procedures and remedies of uh, Wisconsin of uh, statutes 19.59. I would say striking that last uh, Wisconsin statutes because it could be any criminal activity. It, it, that ordinance is going to limit that prosecution to just 19.59 and i think it could be anything i don't want that limited to just that i would strike that last part okay so i wonder if what we could do is um at the if you go to the crawford sock county example the first sentence mm -hmm. um after it says recommendation to the county board do we need or in the case of an employee to the personnel committee no I don't think so. 
I agree. Mm -hmm. okay. I, agree. I don't think so either. Okay, so we will end that sentence right after county board. Mm -hmm. We'll do a period there. And then um, shall we continue on then? Can I just, just pause oh, you for one second? Sure. Just because I think this is going to get really wordy, and I don't like that the Crawford County repeats ethics inquiry board twice in one sentence. Okay. I think it should just say the board second. Mm -hmm. I think we should refer all of our matters to the Crawford County Board. <laughs> oh, well, that would be interesting. <laughs> it would get us out of hot water. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll probably, when we put all this together, by the way, we'll probably in the introductory part say ethics board, and, and then just... it'll say in parentheses, hereafter to refer to as the board, <laughs> yeah. um, perhaps we'll, we'll have to figure that out. But yeah, we, we don't have to have two it two times in one sentence. Are we even referring to ourselves as ethics inquiry board? Because we'll figure that out yet. Okay. We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll figure that we'll out. Jump ahead. Okay. So if we could skip down then after personnel committee, it says the board may make the following recommendations. Number one, recommend that the county board order the officer or employee to conform his or her conduct to the ethics code or recommend that they be censured, suspended, removed from office, be issued a private reprimand, all the way down to the end of that one disciplinary action. Is anyone opposed to that sentence being included? I'm not opposed. My only question is, we said we liked Iowa County's three sections and I wouldn't wanna be repeating, but can we somehow Ah, combine the two. Yes. Yeah, so, some, like, maybe we should look at Buck or Iowa counties and add in a sentence that you liked from Crawford counties. Or, or what if we just said the board may make the following recommendations and then go A, B, and C? Right. Instead, mm -hmm. we just you know that Linda had said there was something that you like. Oh, the private reprimand versus public reprimand. Yeah, that is not in. Iowa, Iowa County. Do we want that included? Does that if matter? We, if we just included, because the only reason why there's three in Iowa is to break up the difference between right. who the person is. Yes. Can't we include that where it says officer or employee? We need to include something about a public sector in there anyways. And you mean really, Crawford counties? Yeah. And then really the rest of it encompasses everything that's being said yeah. in Iowa. It's one of those three right there. Yeah. But the thing is with Iowa County, the reason why they've separated those out is because the the po possible penalties, they listed them as different. And I think they're all covered in. So oh, so you're saying just lump them all together and don't bother about like if this person is a citizen member, all we do is. The other. Just, okay. These are the penalties that are. Could come down. That could come down and... So maybe our three types of people who can be affected are officials, citizen members of boards and employees. Mm -hmm. The, that's I pulled those from right. the Iowa County example, and then just then so the board may make the following recommendations regarding officials, citizen members of boards, or employees. Okay. They, and then go on recommend that the county board officer uh, um, order this person to conform their conduct. Blah blah blah. And they they just list out all the options, and then that way all the options are available for all the types yes. of people. So I'm gonna. Throw another wrench in the fire. Oh man, <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. So okay. uh, under item number one, it says recommend that the county board order the officer or employee or citizen uh, to conform. So we're gonna do all this, and then we're gonna wait for a county board meeting to issue a officially. I mean, that all of a sudden we're 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 dragging th something out when we've made a decision, and now we're gonna wait. Three weeks, a month, two months, if it's around the holidays and we don't have a meeting in December, um, is there any should, should that be that we give that direction to the county administrator so we can, it can be done, it can be worked on instead of waiting for the next government process? In all of these examples, though, that they well, do you like could call a special meeting, depending on how Enos. Uh, Violation is you can call a special meeting, but I think, it's, I think if it's pretty serious, you wouldn't. If I were the person being charged with something, I would want to know that they're the full county board actually giving their. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
versus one small committee deciding to remove me from office or whatever would be my opinion. I think I agree with that. Uh, you typically, we meet on the first Thursday of the month, assuming we keep this, and then the county board meets on the third Tuesday. So that's usually just, you know, a week and a half to two and a half weeks out. So I think it would happen relatively quickly in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so um, I think what we're doing here is we're doing a lot of combination. Um, it sounds like what we're doing is, and let me try to repeat all this and see if I can get it right. Um, we're recommending the first sentence of the Iowa County section. It would say violation of any provision of this code should raise conscientious questions for um, an employee, official, or citizen member of a board concerned as that. Uh, whether voluntary resignation or other action is indicated to promote the best interests of Richland County. And then it shifts over to the Crawford Sauk County example. Um, if the ethics inquiry board finds that clear satisfactory and convincing evidence exists for the believing for believing the allegations of the complaint, the ethics board shall refer its findings and recommendations to the county board. Um, the board may recommend that the officer, employee, or citizen member conform his or her conduct to the ethics code or recommend that they be censured, suspended, removed from office, issued a private public reprimand. In the case of an employee, also recommend denial of merit increase, suspension without pay, discharge, or other appropriate disciplinary action. The ethics inquiry board may also refer the matter to the district attorney to commence enforcement pursuant to the procedures and, uh, no, just enforcement. What about corporation council? Do you want that in there? Too? So should we add a sentence in? Um, well, could it just say to the corporation council the, for prosecution or the DA? Or the DA. There we go. That's what that last sentence should say. The ethics inquiry board may also refer the matter to the corporation council or DA to commence enforcement. Perfect. Sounds good. So does does Zoom um, type all that out as we're talking? <laughs> Dang, that would have been great. No, perfect. It, and then I'm like, wait, what are all these documents we're using? And then, yeah, so then I, was I, just, I end up typing and putting Thank it in you. that last column. Thank you. <laughs> well, you all can check my work. <laughs> okay, so I think we let's take that in a motion. Someone would like to make that as a motion. I need the last motion. Oh, I need motion. Motion by Gentis? Yes. Frank wants a second it, I bet. I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, any further discussion of that motion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. You all are up for it. Whew. Let's go to the top and see if it goes quicker. I think those bottom ones are the hardest, but maybe I'm wrong. So go to page two of the cover sheet. This is the very top of the chart. This is governing body. So currently the governing body in our ordinance says it's the ethics board. And that's five supervisor members of the county board nominated by the committee on committees. And we don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore. So we're we're functioning as that only because our committee structure document says it. Our ordinance is out of date. So option A, I just typed up two ideas here. This was many moons ago. Option A, we could say it's the rules and strategic planning standing committee. That would match our committee structure document. Option B, we could be more open-ended and we could say the county board changes the committee structure document. We could just say a committee of the county board, which has been assigned the duties of the ethics board. Or option C could be in Crawford and Sauk counties, what they do is they have three members and one alternate. One is who's a licensed attorney um, appointed by the county board chair with approval of the county board. Um, the ethics inquiry board, those are residents of the county and shall not be public officials or employees during the time of appointment and shall serve staggered three-year terms expiring on the third Tuesday in April or the third year following blah, blah, blah. The Corporation Council shall provide legal advice, secretarial service, and assistance to the board. Oh, that's what we need to so do. So do they not actually use their super or their county supervisors? They that? do not use their county board. Interesting. And I don't that's know. interesting because we were worried about how they would make a complaint. So. They're making sure that someone outside is looking to make sure we're doing correct. So there, I think there's something very ethical about this. Uh, 
That'd be a lot of work though. It to would get it, have it sport up and running and find people to be on it. I don't know how to yeah. Jack, can you use your mic? We're talking about two instances in the last two years, Marty. Well, there there are more. You'd be surprised how many things come up, but uh, those are the two I thought would I mean this committee's been doing it. I've been involved I think in a couple. You should stay with this committee. I've always thought of this as the ethics committee. Yeah. Regulations. What about um, the Iowa County? Yeah, I was just looking that up. If you go to page five, oh no, never mind. I didn't find it. Looking to see if we can find who's in charge there. It says on page, I don't know what page I'm on, but in 701.03, mm -hmm. it says board shall mean the Iowa County Ethics Board created by section 702 of the Iowa County Code of Ordinances. So I don't think we have section 702. To look at what that actually means. Just look it up quick, see if I can find it. My internet's not up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So we don't know how Iowa County does it. So we just need to make a decision about do we want to create a separate citizen board or do we want to retain this I think it stays with um, this committee. The question would come up, what if the complaint is against one of the members of this committee? Um, I guess at that point, that individual would be asked to not be part of it. Well, you said you wanted it to go before the whole county board, so I guess we got that figured out. I thought about that later. I'm like, well, maybe people <laughs> wouldn't want, what I meant by that was, like, let's say you're wanting to challenge it. You would prefer to be, I don't know what I prefer. Never mind. Strike that <laughs> from it. I don't know. I just assumed that's the tradition, I guess, is to have, I guess, because if you were appealing, you'd want right. to have a larger body to appeal to, probably. But there have been county board members accused of ethics violations in the past, and the ethics board did, did address it. It did not go to the whole county board, but um, I don't. In my memory, I don't think that person was a member of the ethics board, but yeah, you would think, yeah. why would that person be voting on it if they're the one being accused? And we could spell that out if we would like. I guess, uh, no, I guess my reasoning was, if, I, if we're on the committee and you're accused, you know, you, you shouldn't, I mean, that would definitely be a conflict. So according to what resolution, what code, what? I there's nothing to do. I shouldn't have spoken so fast because after I said that, I was thinking, you know what, maybe I wouldn't want that, but maybe I would want the ability to request that it goes to the full county board if you were trying to appeal, basically. I actually don't mind it going to the full county board. I just think if it if it's a county board member involved, then they're not going to be voting on it. How could they? That's not what I meant, though. I just meant like if you're a county board member, you wanted to appeal to the larger county board, not that you could vote on it, but like. You want 21 people's opinions. Exactly, like instead of five people's opinion or whatever. Yeah, a wider group well, of people. Can we just say rules and strategic planning standing committee and then uh, something about if if an ethics if one member, that member would no longer be a voting member at that meeting or something. Can't you just add that clause there? Or does that go against our standing committee thing? So are you penalizing somebody before they're found? Guilty? No, but I think they vote on their own guilt or not guilt. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't say they're off of it. I just said that they, I mean, it's just like, it, it those are other things. So if we have, you know, we've said that if you have a family member or something, you abstain from voting. So it's the same sort of thing in my mind. It's not that. Yeah. Voting choice, but yeah. conversation they should be. Yeah. It is about that right. person. I'm a little yeah. lost. What are we discussing? What so we're we just discussing the governing, the governing body. Um, 
option A, B, or C here. Um, sounds like the group is is kind of leaning toward option A, a or B. Um, the re only reason I like option B is because in case the county board changes it, we don't have to rewrite the ordinance. Because uh, right now it says ethics inquiry board with five members. It got too specific, I think. And now we don't have an ethics board. We just say the rules and strategic planning standing committee handles the job of the ethics board. So, so you like B because it could the county board could change it within this existing structure if they chose to. If the county board was changing, uh, option B I think leaves it open ended enough. Uh, say the ethics board responsibilities get shifted to a new committee and it's no longer called the rules and strategic planning committee. Say they call it the rules and resolutions committee, like it used to be. Then you don't have to go and change the ordinance for it to. Okay. That's what you mean. Uh, yeah, I, based on that, I would go on with B. I don't get that. I'm lost. So right now, if we write the ordinance, Supervisor Gentis, and we say, um, the rules and strategic planning standing committee shall handle the responsibilities of the ethics board. Then say next year we decide we're not going to call it the rules and strategic planning standing committee anymore. We're going to call it the rules and resolutions committee. Well, now the ordinance says something that's not accurate because we changed the name of the committee. And if a member of the existing ethics board, if that's who is being questioned, the county board can just change it to a different committee. And then it's already in our committee structure that we've been assigned that duty right now. So we wouldn't have to do any other changes besides this. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, I, I make that motion. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion by Glassbrenner and a second by Cosgrove to use option B. Um, and do we need do, do we need to address the accepting someone who's been accused? Wait, what? Of voting. So the the question is, if there's somebody already on that committee, if 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 a person is being charged or is being brought to question is already on that committee, what should we do? I don't think we need to bring that up because if that is the case, the county board then at that point has the ability to go, hey, we're moving it to another committee. We're moving it to public safety or something else if they really wanted to. Or wouldn't they just, wouldn't it be understood that they wouldn't be involved in the process? We still could have oh, a forum. Isn't that right? under that conflict of interest? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that? Right. It, but either way, it could be. If there's a question of that, if, if it doesn't flow right, the county board can say it's going to this other committee. I'm fine leaving it alone. Okay, so um, there's no other discussion on that one. All those in favor of the motion to include option B under governing body, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. Um, purpose of ethics. We currently have no purpose. <laughs> That was part of our problem back in September, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Crawford, I, I read through these this morning when I was getting ready for the meeting and wow, I just, I, I don't wanna say like, I favored one of them more than the other. I just thought we just gotta have some sort of purpose spelled out because it just, in my mind, just makes it so much more clear why we're doing all this, so. They're a mouthful, though, goodness. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I borrow committee member Gentis for two seconds? Of course. Outside. Thank you. We'll have quorum. Yes.
Okay, so Supervisor Glassbrenner likes Iowa counties. I was just going to say that. I don't, of any of them I'm leaning towards, that's that's the one I'm leaning on. Yes, if you need to leave Supervisor Gentis, we do have a quorum. Oh, I left the phone number in the car. Maybe I have it in my phone. Okay, so we got two for Iowa County so far. Honestly, it's similar to Crawford's. I just think Crawford's has it split up unnecessarily. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much okay with whatever you, know, you all <laughs> have stated. You are too. Okay, so let's get a uh, motion, motion for Iowa counties. But hold on, before we do that. When you scroll to Iowa counties, um, where it talks about in section two, where it says does not prevent any, it's like the third sentence down, this code of ethics does not prevent any public official from accepting other employment or following any pursuit, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, it goes further down, down towards the very end. County officials may need to engage in employment, professional and business activities other than official act duties in order to support themselves or their families. And then moving on, it says may need to maintain investments which activities or investments do not conflict with the specific provisions of this code. Did we prevent, like, I, I'm trying to remember back when we had our, the like contract agreements and those kinds of things. Um, did we, that doesn't conflict with this, correct? I don't think so. We just said under contracts, we said an official or employee or a business in which an official or employee holds a 10% or greater interest may not enter into a contract with the county or the formation of a contract or contracts with Richland County involving the receipts or disbursements of more than $15,000 in any year. What if their employer does? Did we talk about that? I think we did. I, I Yeah, I think this... Uh, well, it's no, we said, um, if the employee holds a 10% or greater interest in a business, so if the employer does, if they're not a 10% or greater shareholder, then they're, they're okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry to take us back there. I just wanted to make sure we weren't. You got to make sure it all fits together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then otherwise I'm great with this. Right. Okay. So <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Motion by Frank. Second. Second by last runner. <laughs> okay, any more discussion on this one? Okay, I leave till the, That yes. was much faster than I expected. Okay, so. all those in favor of Iowa County yeah. be, uh, language being used for our purpose of ethics, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. And then the last one, if we can get this last one done, we can draft the ordinance for our next meeting. Um, as long as we'll handle the public property one at that at that point. Okay. Um, so the last one is positions covered. So right now our ordinance covers part-time and full-time employees, except elected officials, the highway commissioner and the corporation council. In Crawford and Sauk County, it's all county officials, whether elected or appointed, paid or unpaid, including members of boards, committees and commissions, department heads and other county employees. And then in Iowa County, it's all county officials, Specifically, any person holding a county elected office, county employees, i.e. any person holding a full or a part-time position with the county other than a county official and a citizen member, i.e. a person appointed to any position by the county board who is neither an elected county office holder nor a county employee. I'd say B, Crawford. Yeah. Doesn't that say the same thing as the Crawford Sock one, really? It's a whole lot more wordy. Yes, exactly. I don't think we need all those extra definitions. Okay, so Crawford and Sauk County. Okay, let's get a motion for that then. Second. I'll make, I made the motion. <laughs> Cause I can second, second it. I love right. it. Okay. We, there's, there's some speed in the room right now. <laughs> so our people want out. Um, any further discussion on positions covered being the Crawford Sauk County example? No. no. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed say no. I do have a question though. Okay, that motion carries. Go ahead. Sorry. 
did these other documents, did they have a bunch of definitions at the beginning? Were we doing that? Do we have to do that? Well, let's go look. Uh, let's see, Crawford does not have definitions. I believe Iowa does. Iowa so. does, I think, yeah. They do, and then they still have that really wordy mm -hmm. definitions in there. And then... Yeah, it does have definitions in Crawford. Oh. Where's that at? Uh, 4.5 or 6.1 definitions. You're right. Okay. And we did include some definitions already. We already did a financial interest definition, privilege information definition. Did we do any others? Let's see. Our financial interest definition, we adopted that in October. That's at the top of page four. Financial interest definition is at the bottom of page four. We also defined a gift. That's at the top of page six. Oh, uh, we did like this organization. We did immediate family definition too. That's at the top of page eight. So we did four definitions so far. So would you like to would you like to also include um, say from one of those examples the other ones that we have yeah. not defined yet? I say let's go with Crawford's and just add in. Like if we have ones that are defined that they already have defined, just replace like put ours in, but otherwise yep. take what we don't they what we don't have take from them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Unless you see something that doesn't make sense. And we'll have another shot at this next month, but we can pull them in now. Yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, they make sense. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let me take that as a motion from Glassbrenner to use the Crawford County. Well, should we look at it next time? Like, is there a way to just put them all together and then, or do you think we should just make it now? I we, think we should look at it. Okay, leave it, let, let's leave it for now and then leave, we'll handle that next month. Okay. I am worried that there might be things that contradict I'll try to set that up next month with definitions in one spot and then have a list of decisions for us to make. Okay. Anything else that's jumping out to folks? Where are we here? I apologize. We are pretty much done. We just, we took care of governing body, purpose of ethics and positions covered. Okay. We took action on all those. Okay. So I think what we need now is, I think we need a, a bigger motion to take all of our recommendations we've developed in the past. What, five meetings? <laughs> oh, no, five meetings. Yep. It's been, we started in <laughs> September. So yeah. I think we need a motion to take all of our recommendations from the last five meetings and draft an ordinance for the committee's consideration at the February meeting. I'll so make we'll that get to review it once more then, right? Okay. Motion by Rudersdorf and is there a second? Second by Frank, session. Supervisor Gentis. So we get to review it then once more. Okay, that's what that good, because it, motion means. Go over the public property one. Okay, okay, that's why I was confused. Yeah. We'll go over public property and definitions at the next meeting, mm -hmm. along with that draft ordinance. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. And if you know we need a little more time with the draft ordinance, we don't have to push it out committee in February. We can wait till March. So, but I think just to get it all put together, I think is going to help all of us. Okay. Everyone says that every meeting. Are we going to look at this all together? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll go ahead and make that motion. You did. He had a motion and a second. And a second. Just so need to vote. Oh, thank you. I second it. Thank you. During discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ready for a vote. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of drafting an ordinance based on all of our work in the past five months, please say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, that motion carries. Good job. Okay, um, future agenda items. Does anyone have any future agenda items? <laughs> I okay. can't think of it right now. We'll go to adjournment then. So we are looking for a motion to February adjourn today. Groundhog's Day. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, to Thursday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day at 10 a.m. Motion by Frank. Second. Second by Cosgrove. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are aye. Thank you.